cost savings and higher prices have lifted Axonobel's profits in the third quarter, but the Dutch paint maker reported a 4% decline in sales, uh, missing expectations on that line as well. But let's get to Thierry Van Lanker, who is the CEO of Axonobel. Thierry, if anything, your company and you and the management have become like a lightning rod for how companies are run and how activists attack long-running companies as well. I noticed that Elliot has still got 5% of your company. They are the third largest shareholder as well. But have you got the company you want to go forward and also are you in accord now with your shareholders uh, I think we are uh, if, if you look at the third quarter I think we do show significant improvement I mean there are big headwinds on currency on raw materials uh, but the fact that we deliver a stronger uh, third quarter result I think uh, is a significant proof that we're working on it and I think on our shareholders I think the best uh, way to keep uh, being in accord with the shareholders is to deliver on the promises we made we have the 15 by 20 50 percent return on sales uh, by 2020 we have outlined a bridge on how to get from 2017 to 2020 and as we methodically uh, go through those steps and deliver on them I, I do believe we get into a much better and a much more balanced conversation with our shareholders as they see us uh, really following up on what we promised to do. Well, absolutely you have as well and of course the sale of a speciality chemicals unit the return of money uh, via buybacks um, as well but I mean do you expect the roster of shareholders to change now that they've got what they wanted i.e. longer term shareholders come in activists depart the roster? Uh, well, we've seen some some uh, some changes in the roster. Uh, indeed, longer-term shareholders that were always in our uh, in our stock continue to be there. But I would say, for uh, for an activist or somebody who's more shorter term, I do believe there is also a chance for us to deliver on that. So I think we we see uh, right now a, a good uh, uh, coexistence of both types of shareholders, and we feel pretty comfortable with that. Yeah, I want to get into margins and pricing because in a couple of key areas in the business, decorative paints, for instance, you've had a return on sales up 12.1%. You've cited uh, some positive price mix driven by pricing initiatives. So it sounds like you're really tackling what you're seeing in the product line there, but slightly different picture on performance coatings where you've actually spoken about higher selling prices. So tell us about the strategy as we have lots of concerns in the market about inflation and a compression because of higher wages, higher input costs. Yeah, well, we've been tackling that since the beginning of the, well, actually the end of last year, we've been tackling that, uh, I think, step by step. On the inflation, on cost, etc., we have this continuous improvement program, which is actually a, a combination of lean programs that is offsetting our uh, on underlying inflation. We, again, are successful in doing that. The raw material inflation has been pretty massive, uh, so for us it was pretty clear that uh, instead of keeping explaining what's happening, that we had to step it up. So we've been taking quite some significant uh, pricing steps to offset our raw material. The goal that we had set ourselves was to offset that inflation uh, by the end of this year. I think we're well on our way of doing that. But if you look at it for our decorative paints business, it's uh, quarter over quarter versus last year. It's a 6% it's a price mix improvement, so it's pretty drastic. For performance coatings, it is a 7% uh, increase. So that gives you the order of magnitude on what we have to do in the market. But we're really, really that set on uh, making at least that baseline healthy again so offset those uh, inflationary uh, pressures another somewhat unexpected uh, curveball we got thrown this quarter was uh, really movements in foreign currencies specifically in emerging markets uh, notable examples Argentina almost a hundred percent devaluation uh, Brazil the real the Turkish lira which are all big countries for us um, so even they're very proud of the teams how they stepped up with pricing how they stepped up with their costs and even in those countries we were able to maintain or even improve our results which is a, a very uh, very clear proof of our de determination to deliver on 15 by 20. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.